Okay. Good morning. Welcome back. Uh, any questions? <laughs> questions? No? Okay. Uh, so let's start. So we were discussing about uh, uh, small signal models, generalized small signal frameworks. Uh, we also discussed about the small signal equivalence of several known components uh, in the previous class. So now, uh, now we should get into uh, get into some more detail. Uh, so from today, what we'll do is uh, get into the get into the motivation of this course. We already know what we are trying to do, but we are, we would like to address the motivations that we have been talking about for the last few lectures. So one of the, I mean, the sole motivation of this course is essentially to build an amplifier. So that I have been mentioning, I probably have mentioned a couple of times before, but uh, one of the reasons we want to design an amplifier, as you will see, uh, in analog circuits, there are some principles which are ubiquitous. By that, what I essentially mean is that you, you use it everywhere, uh, regardless of whether you are using making an amplifier or any other analog circuits block. There are some principles which are essentially used everywhere. So through the vehicle of an amplifier, we are going to understand those principles. And these principles are so all pervasive that uh, you will see that as the course progresses, many of those principles will be applicable in across domains, not only in a, in case of circuit design. Uh, so, uh, not so, so let's get, get to it. So essentially, uh, let me ask you, what do you mean by an amplifier in the in case of a, um, a circuit domain block? What do you understand if I say we are trying to build an amplifier? So when I ask you what what I mean, uh, uh, what is meant by an amplifier? I'm essentially asking what what is the input output characteristics? What do you understand about the input output characteristics of a block that can behave like an amplifier? Anything. It is a voltage control. Why do you say it's a voltage control current source? <laughs> yeah, but that is one type, right? Is it necessarily, does it necessarily have to be a voltage control current source? No, right? So, so if I tell you that this is a, again, this is a blocks. It has some input, it has some output, right? So I apply some voltage here. I'm going to get some voltage output here, right? So if I say it's an amplifier, what do I expect? One characteristic is good. So input output depends on input and, and but it's not the other way around. So it means you are expecting unilateral operation, right? That is one. That is a critical point, but is that the most critical expectation from an amplifier? What does amplification mean? Yeah, right? The transfer function has to be more than one. Okay. So when I say transfer function has to be more than one, I essentially now transfer function relates to quantities, right? <laughs> two quantities and two ports also. In this case, let's consider limit ourselves between these two ports. One side, left side is the input port, right side is the output port. So now we know in electrical, we know we, are, we, we deal with voltage, we deal with current, we deal with power. When you say amplifier, again, what do I mean? Is it a voltage amplifier? Is it a current amplifier? Is it amplifying power? It can be either of the three. It doesn't really matter. So only saying an amplifier is probably not a very uh, foolproof definition, right? So uh, the reason I am saying this is, I'm sure you have heard about transformers, right? So is a transformer any sort of amplifier? What type of amplifier is it? It can be a voltage amplifier, right? If let's say you want to end transformer, Output is open circuited. You get, apply some input voltage. Output will be n times the input. Right? That's the basic uh, the basic uh, uh, definition of a transformer. You step up, step down. You do all those things. Similarly, you can can you use a transformer as a current amplifier? 
you can, right? Depending upon if you switch it from NH2, one H2 to NH2 one in applying good current, the output current will be higher. So, uh, but there is one critical thing about a transformer which doesn't fall into the category of an amplifier. Can you tell me what? We haven't discussed, in the last five minutes, we haven't discussed that characteristics of an amplifier. A good amplifier rather, I should say. So let me write down the stuff we have discussed. One discuss, one, one, the first point that came up was it has to be unilateral. Even though it's it's not a necessary condition, but it's a very desirable condition, uh, then you have to have gain, right? Then it can, gain can be voltage, current, power. So I'm now uh, saying that uh, voltage gain, current gain, you can get from, from transformers. But a transformer doesn't do one critical thing. What is it? Rather, it doesn't do two critical things, huh? Ha, right. The product of V and I remains constant, right? It cannot give you power gain, right? A transformer cannot give you power gain. So one critical thing that we should look at is uh, whether our device can give us whether the amplifier that uh, that we are using can give us power gain. Because if it gives us power gain under certain conditions, I can get voltage gain or current gain. Regardless, right? But it's not the other way around. There is one more critical thing that a transformer, for example, doesn't do. Or a good amplifier should have, which a transformer does not have. What about load dependence? Is the gain of a transformer uh, related to whatever you connect here or independent of whatever you connect here? Okay, so when you say independent, uh, I assume you mean because uh, an ideal transformer has n equal to infinity. I mean, trans uh, your inductance is infinity. It's always one is to n, right? So, uh, so but let's say we. So what I'm essentially trying to get at here is. Uh, so if I want to apply, if I if I'm applying, so so the load dependence comes, load independence comes if you are looking at the voltages right at the right at the coils, right? But if I have a generic voltage source. Right, which has a source resistance. Right, if I have a generic voltage source which has a source resistance, then uh, can you comment of whether your V naught over V i will be independent of R L or not, or can you work it out? Work it out. Okay, so what do you think? It will depend or not depend. Okay, why? Okay, why it's not connected? So, so let's do this, right? So, let's say this is V naught. Why? Uh, and uh, and the load resistance is RL. What is the impedance looking into looking into the input port or looking into the port that I I have mentioned into the transformer? Do you know this? What is the preferred impedance? Have you seen this? This becomes RL by N squared. No? Oh, okay, okay. So maybe I'm uh, too early on this concept. But, uh, uh, okay, so, so essentially, so one, let me ask you one question. So one of you said that the circuit seems to be unconnected. Why do you say the circuits are unconnected? 
So just because it is drawn like this, it doesn't mean there is no direct connection. There is, right? Because ultimately they are coupled through inductances, right? You have an inductive core, which couples the input core to the output core. There is a connection, isn't it? So I don't want to get into this one is and business now because I thought that this is an analogy that uh, that will come across. But what I would, uh, then let me skip this analogy because I thought, well, you have done this in, you are doing it in ESO 203. But uh, regardless, so then take it from me that uh, if you see, it, um, if you have a structure like this, then uh, you can show it from the laws of power conservation that if you look into the impedance, if you look into one side, the effective impedance becomes RL over N squared. Okay, so which essentially means that the current that you are drawing from here depends on RL, right? So essentially, this becomes RL over N squared. This is RS, this current is, dependent on RL. So essentially this voltage depends on RL. When you transfer it to the output port, it also depends on RL. And as it, when you will learn transformer in, uh, in your other courses, you will see that uh, in a transformer, you can either get a voltage gain or a current gain, because as one of you pointed out that you cannot get a power gain, right? And what is the intuition behind why can't you get a power gain? Law of, power, law of power conservation, there is only one source here. The amount of power that source is, is going to uh, push in, that is the maximum amount of power. In principle, in theory, you can get out from anywhere in the circuit, right? So power conservation holds across all, all disciplines, right? Uh, okay, so power gain is not possible. So another problem is your gain. If you, if you say that I have a voltage gain, the gain is also dependent on the load. In a good amplifier, the load can vary, but still the gain should be same, right? I mean, a classic example is, uh, is that of a cell phone. What is the load in a cell phone? The load essentially is whatever, I mean, if you are streaming a video or if you are streaming an audio or you listen to the audio or if you are talking uh, over the cellular network, you are exerting the cell phone in a different way. You are expecting different power output from the cell phone depending upon what you are doing. In other ways, other ways of saying is that if you, you are expecting different currents from the cell phone depending on what type of activity you are indulging in, right? So when you are saying that I'm expecting different current, I essentially electrical parlance of that is to say that I'm expecting, I'm saying that the load will vary, right? If the load varies, the current will vary. But I expect the cell phone to do whatever it is doing regardless of whatever activity I am indulging in. So essentially what we are saying that if there is an amplifier inside a cell phone, that amplifier has to work regardless of what type of loading conditions are imposing on it. Okay. So a critical thing for a good amplifier is should be independent of RL, right? So, okay, so this should be independent of RL. This part will come, it will take us quite a few lectures to get to how we build amplifiers which are independent of RL, but we can get to how to build power, an amplifier which can give us power gain pretty quickly. So that's what we are going to do now. Okay, so, when we are talking about uh, when we are talking about an amplifier, naturally we have a source, we have a load, and we are essentially in charge of building a box which can give us the amplification. So we are interested in finding out or designing what the stuff inside the box should be. Okay, one. Uh, uh, one of the characteristics 
was already alluded to with regards to the example of a, of a transformer, that a transformer cannot give you voltage, power gain because power in, power out cannot be more than power in. So, uh, so naturally, if I say that there is, I put a box, I don't know what is inside the box, but there is no power source. There is no, no voltage source, no current source in the, inside this box. Is it conceivable that this guy can give me power amplification? No, right? Because regardless of what you put in, law of power conservation should, should hold. So P in, P out. So P out has to be always less than, not very, very less than, less than equal to P in, right? So the first thing that we need is another power source. First thing that you need is another, another voltage source or a current source, right? Which can give me the additional power. Without that, there is no hope. Okay, good. So let's put in a power source. And uh, let's say that there is a power source and that power source I take out. So essentially inside the box, there is no power source still. So let's say I have a VDC. Okay. So now the question that I'm, I'll be asking is, uh, can, what are the what are the next characteristics of this stuff inside the box that is required to get any amplification? Okay, so we have been again we have been dealing with linear network, nonlinear network. The question that we should ask is: Can a LTI system? We are only dealing with time time invariant networks in this course, so I'll just say linear network. Uh, can a linear network give me power amplification? So that's the next question to ask. But even before I ask the next question, I would like to take you back to your signals and systems course for once because it would help make, make the point that I'm going to make. So let's say I have a... Uh, yes. Ah, okay, okay. So his question is, uh, uh, let's explain the this concept, right? So let's say without, we don't have any battery connected. So is it possible? Is it possible to get P out more than P in? So, so this is a closed system, right? No energy in with other than whatever you are seeing on the screen, right? So there is only one energy source that is the voltage source. So you are going to extract some energy from the voltage source. So somewhere it is going to get dissipated, right? So in this case, let's say uh, some part will probably get dissipated inside the box, some part will get dissipated across RL, right? So if I add up all the dissipations, I should be, it should equal, it should equate to whatever has been pushed in, right? So now if there is some sort of dissipation inside the box, it's natural to expect that the power that will be dissipated across R will be lesser than what you have got from the energy source, right? So that's all it means that P out has to be less than P. Okay. So natural consequence is that you need another voltage source, another source. Otherwise, there is no way you can get voltages, at, I mean, signals at RL with a higher energy content than the signal that you are pushing in. Right? Okay. Good. Thanks for interrupting and asking. Uh, so now, uh, so if I take you back to your signals and systems course, again, let me, before I take you back, let me ask you, have you done Fourier transforms, Fourier series? You have, right? Okay, good. So let's say I have two signals and we'll be dealing with sinusoidal signals and DC signals in this course, right? No funky multi-types, I mean, uh, square wave, uh, triangular wave type of signals. So, so let's say we have one source which has one signal which is a perfect sinusoid at frequency omega naught radian per second, right? So if I do a, if I plot this, if I see the, uh, if I plot this with respect to frequency, with respect to omega, and this is the strength, this is the amplitude of the sinusoid, or rather strength of the signal, magnitude of the signal, uh, this is, let's say, xt. 
since we are in an electrical class, let me call it VT. And this is V omega. What do you expect to see in this in this plot, bottom plot? So essentially, I'm asking if I do a Fourier transform of, of a sinusoid, what should I get? Impulse, right? You should get an impulse at 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 omega naught. In this case, it is at omega naught. So you should get an impulse at omega naught. Great. So now let's assume that we have a uh, we have this this whatever signal we have. This has another component, which is a DC component, right? So so let's say I have another component, which is a DC component of the value of that DC is something. I mean, I don't know, maybe. Mm, say V2. So, so now this out, this, uh, this VT has two components. One is DC, one is this sinusoid at frequency omega naught. So in the spectrum, what are you going to see? Why would you see a continuous function? So what is so holy about DC? D I can say that DC is also a sinusoid at zero frequency. Right? So if I say DC is a sinusoid at zero frequency, what will, you, what will its spectrum be? Another impulse at zero. Right? An impulse, another impulse at zero. Great. So I'll have another impulse at zero. Correct? Okay, so if I now ask you, what is the frequent, what is the power, what is the power content of the signal that is at omega naught? What are you going to say? So let's say this, this is a, this strength of this sinus uh, of this signal is a, and strength of this signal is b. So other way around, right? So this is a, and this is b. So if I tell you that, uh, tell me what is the uh, power content of the signal at omega naught. What are you going to tell me? Have you done Parseval's theorem? Yes or no? Yes, okay. So what, what is, in English, what is the Parseval theorem telling us? It's essentially telling us that regardless of whether you are calculating the power in the time domain or the frequency domain, they are the same, right? So yes, the power of the sinusoid in time domain, if I go ahead and do integral, square, average, what do I get? So if I... So if I have to do power, what do I do? I do squared dt one over time period, right? So what do I get if I do this? A squared by two t, a squared by two, right? In this case, t will get canceled because t and omega naught are related over t times omega naught will be two pi, right? So, okay, so, uh, so, this is the time domain way of figuring it out. So naturally, if I do the same thing in frequency domain, I should get the same thing. So the what is the power content of the signal at omega naught? I promise you this is leading to somewhere. So what is the power content? If I look at the frequency domain and look at, uh, and trying to figure, uh, if I look at the frequency domain and say that this is the spectrum, this is the spectrum, I see an impulse, at frequency omega naught, the strength of the impulse is A, which essentially is telling me that there is a sinusoid of amplitude A at the frequency omega naught. What is the power content of that sinusoid at frequency omega naught? A squared by two, great. So the power content is A squared by two. So P at omega naught is equal to A squared by two. Similarly, what will be the uh, power content of this of the DC signal? B squared, not by two, because 
in a sinusoid you have both sides you have plus omega naught minus omega naught minus omega naught i have been shown here you have negative frequency in the dc you both both of them collapse so essentially you get b squared okay so uh, so now why am i saying this so sometimes in in, in circuit design circuit designers often refer to uh, the power of a signal at omega naught now the quantity power is a scalar right the power doesn't contain any time information at least the average power doesn't contain any time information. So if it doesn't contain any power time information, then it should not contain any frequency information also. But we say power at omega naught. We say power at omega naught. When we say that, we essentially are meaning that there is a signal operating at omega naught. If I do these squaring and averaging and RMS kind of operation, the value that we get is the power at omega naught. Okay. So now let's come back to where we started. So let's say this this box that we are trying to use as a as an uh, as a uh, uh, as something that can give us amplification of power is an LTI system because again we know LTI so that's naturally the first fallback thing, right? So if this is an LTI, we know that superposition holds. It's a linear superposition. It doesn't even have to be time invariant. It's a linear system, so superposition should hold. So if superposition holds, what does it tell us? It essentially tells us that I can find out uh, the output voltage or the output current by desensitizing one source at a time or the other all the sources, but keeping one at one at a time and adding up the responses at the end, right? That's what superposition is telling us. So if we do that, what are we going to get? So let's desensitize VDC. So if I desensitize VDC, which means I'm shorting VDC and I'll be getting some output, right? So this is at omega naught. VDC is operating at omega naught. It's not a DC source. Sorry, um, VI is not a DC source. It is operating an omega naught, and VDC is naturally it's at DC. So, so two questions. You are going to get a signal at V naught across RL. Can you tell me the the frequency content of that signal? Omega naught. Will it have any DC component? No, because there is no DC source, right? So, and this is an LTI system. So in LTI system, if you put in a frequency omega naught, output is always omega naught. Correct? E to the power j omega naught t is the I n function. Right? So uh, a frequency of omega naught. So at the output, you are going to get some signal, which is at omega naught. So now the next question: Can you comment on 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 the power that you are going to extract with regards to the power that is going in? under this condition. So if I say this is P in at omega naught, and this is P out. So again, when I say P in at omega naught, I mean that the signal that you are, is a, is a, is a power of the signal at omega naught. Okay, so, so can you comment whether P out at omega naught will be more or less than P in? It will be less than. No doubt. Okay. So, so now, what is the next thing to do? The next thing to do is to, and this we haven't evaluated the full network because there is another source, right? We are doing step by step. So, what is the next step? You short the source at omega naught, reinsert the VDC, which was required to get extra power, right? That's what the motivation of the VDC was. So now can you comment on whether the V out data we are going to get will have any component at omega naught or will have only component of DC? DC? It will have only component at DC, right? So V out will be only at DC. And this power out, you will get some power out, but this will be at DC, correct? We all agree? Okay. 
So now let's go back to the original circuit, right? So let's go back to the original circuit, which had both of these sources put together. So, so if I call this top top guy to be V0 within brackets omega naught, which means it has only component at omega naught, and this is V0 at zero, which means it has only component at, at, at zero. So what do you think uh, the components or uh, the frequency components of V0 now will be when I put both the sources back? It will have both omega naught and zero, right? And, but can we, can, we, can we comment on what will be the signals actually, given that I know the cases, uh, cases that I have sketched on top? Sum of those two, superposition, right? That's what superposition tells us. So, so it will be V0, V0 with respect to time, obviously, but at omega naught, again, V0 with respect to time at DC. Correct? So now let me go back and draw the spectrum. What is the spectrum? The spectrum will be one, some component at omega naught. The strength of this guy will be V0 at DC. And you will have something at DC. The strength of this guy will be V0 at omega naught. I mean, this so stuff at DC can be much higher than the stuff at omega naught also, depending upon what type of source you apply. So this is regardless of whether I have sketched it as a, with a smaller uh, vector. So now the question to you is that, what is the frequency component of the signal at omega naught? Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, right. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, after the end of this course, I'll probably say I make intentional mistakes. But, uh, but it was not intentional, but thank you. So, <laughs> uh, so now, now can you comment on uh, what is the power content of the signal at omega naught? V naught square, whatever that amplitude I have, squared by two, correct? But is that any different from the, v naught, from the power that I was extracting under this condition when I have shorted the voltage source, a DC voltage source? Let me repeat the question. So what I'm essentially saying is, or rather let me sketch the spectrum at this case. So if I sketch the spectrum here, what would I have seen? At omega naught, height V0 at omega naught, mod of that, correct? So when I have inserted both the sources back, what am I seeing? at omega naught, has the strength of the signal at omega naught changed? No, it's a linear system. Regardless of why I've used n number of other sources at different frequencies, it will not be able to impact what is happening at omega naught. Correct? So essentially the power output at the frequency of omega naught doesn't really change, even though you have applied a DC voltage source. Okay. So then essentially this is, one can argue that this is not amplification because if you take the example of what is happening now, I'm speaking into a speaker. There is, it's getting converted into some electrical signals and getting amplified and uh, getting thrown out through the, through the speakers, right? So there is an amplification and clearly I'm not, I'm not exerting as much power as the, as the speaker is throwing out. Right, so there is amplification, but the amplification is happening at the frequency at which I am speaking, not at DC. You are not hearing some noise and something else. So we need amplification, but we also need amplification at our frequency of interest, not any other frequency. So if you, I mean, if you see in this case, in the combined case, it is arguable that if I add up these two powers, it can be more than the power that is going in through the, through the AC source. If I combine those two power quantities, it's possible, obviously it's possible, it's not even possible, it's quite probable that if you, if you increase the 
uh, value of the DC voltage source, the amount of power that uh, that you are extract uh, that you will be getting at the output will be much higher than the amount of power that you have gotten without the DC voltage source. But the power is that you are getting is at some useless frequency. The extra power that you'll be getting is that as a DC. So that's of no use. So essentially, yes. Yes, there will be. There will be. I have I purpose. I mean, I didn't put put it there, but yeah. Obviously, all real signals will have plus and minus, right? So that's why you have this by two. If we add up both of them, the by two goes off. Uh, so so the point that I'm trying to get at here is so in an LTI system, you cannot survive this trap. You can have n number of voltage sources at some DC frequencies, but you will not get power amplification in an LDI system because this translation of signals from one frequency to the other doesn't happen. Okay, so ultimately the goal is, yes, we need voltage source. We need an additional source. Without that, there is no scope of getting extra power at some, some frequencies than, that we have put in. That's not possible, but we also need the power from this frequency to get translated to this frequency. Then and only then I can boost up that amplitude of that uh, of the delta of the delta pulse, right? Uh, of that impulse at omega naught. And that you cannot get in an LTI system. Okay. So it naturally means that we need nonlinear systems, right? We need nonlinearity to get amplification of power. Okay, so uh, that is the first motivation. That is, the, I mean, first tick, uh, box ticked as to why we want to use nonlinearity. Without nonlinearity, there is no scope of getting any 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 amplification of power. Okay, fine. So, which means that this box that we yes. Ah, okay. Good question. So let me spend the last five minutes explaining that and we'll start off with the rest of the stuff later. So, so let's assume a generic transfer function which has some sort of nonlinearity. Uh, so let's say I have a box. So let's start off with a linear transfer function then we'll get into nonlinearity. So and it has two ports, two inputs. So this is uh, one input. This is another input, and this is an output RL. So I can say that V naught is a linear combination of these two sources, right? VDC and VI. So this becomes alpha VDC plus some beta VI. Correct? Some linear combination. So this is a function of time. So from, since this is linear, I mean, we argued uh, using intuition and using uh, sketches of uh, impulses that you cannot, you cannot get power translated from here to there. But let's assume that this new box is nonlinear, right? So if it is nonlinear, it is possible for, if nonlinearity is present, So it's possible to have a transfer function, which is, let's say, alpha VDC plus beta VIP plus maybe some squared function, right? So let's say eta whole squared. I'm not showing other terms, but in case of, let's say we have only square nonlinearity, it is quite conceivable that you get this type of outputs okay so now see what what happens if i expand this so this guy remains the same here you get alpha squared vdc squared plus beta squared vi squared so the and then you get two alpha beta vdc vit correct so i will let me leave out these terms because they are hanging out on their own right they don't have any 
cross product, but this guy has a cross product. Your VD is, you can see that VIT, right? Is it's almost as if the amplitude of VIT has gotten appended, has gotten amplified by a factor of beta times VDC. When the beta is not particularly important, but the VDC is important because VDC is your source. You have applied it separately. Right? So that is a design variable. So essentially, this is telling you that if you have a nonlinearity, not any type of nonlinearity, right? So some particular type of nonlinearity, then it is possible to, to, to amplify your expected signal that is VIT with some factor. The factor is proportional to the value of the voltage source that you have used, additional voltage source that you have used, right? Make sense? No audience. Okay. So, so essentially the crux of the matter is nonlinearity helps us getting power amplification, but only nonlinearity will not help. Nonlinearity plus additional voltage source, right? So we will we'll get into analysis of these type of circuits in the next class. I'll be posting one a tutorial today. So you can go through it. We'll have a mini quiz next next uh, Tuesday.